Hey guys, in this lesson, we'll create an Amazon Relational Database Service database. In the RDS Management Console here, I'm going to select the option to create a database. Now you can do that here if you end up on this main page, or you can find it on the left hand side under databases. So let's create a database. I'm going to leave it on standard create. And the first choice I need to make is which engine do I want to use? AWS are defaulting to Aurora. I think they want to push people in that direction. And then you've got the two different engines for Aurora, MySQL or Postgres. So what I'm going to do is move down to MySQL here. I'm going to choose MySQL for the database. And then let's scroll down a little further and I'll leave it on the MySQL Community Edition. Now we get some options for different templates that are going to determine things like the amount of storage and the instance type that's going to be used. So for production, you might want to use this option for fast, consistent performance, but it's going to cost more. You can choose dev test if it's just a development test workload or even free tier to keep us within the free tier. And that will impose some limitations. You can see that the availability and durability options down here have been grayed out. That's okay, we're not doing multi-AZ. So I'm gonna leave it on free tier. I can choose to name the database. I'm gonna call this database MySQL. Nothing too imaginative there. Then we've got the master username and we might wanna add in a password here. So set yourself a nice strong password and then we can scroll down and here we can see the instance configuration options and what we're choosing is the DB instance class. So essentially which instance family and type are we going to use? And it's defaulted to the DB T3 micro. Now we did choose free tier so I'm presuming that this is a free tier instance. Then we can see the storage type it's chosen GP2 with just 20 gigabytes of storage. So that's good, all keeping us within the free tier. There is an option here, as you can see, for storage auto scaling as well. We're not gonna fill up our table, so we don't have to worry too much about that. For connectivity, you can actually connect an EC2 compute resource and you can select the VPC. I'm just going to leave the default VPC selected. Then you can choose the subnet group it's by default picked up a subnet group that has the six subnets and availability zones in the default VPC, that's fine. Then you need to work out, does the database need a public IP address so it's accessible directly from the internet? In this case, no, I don't need public access. For VPC security group, I can choose a security group. So I'm just going to deselect the default and choose my web access. And then I can go and update the rules in that security group if I'm gonna connect an application server to it. And it would need 3306 port for MySQL. For availability zone, I can choose if I like or just leave it to auto assign. I'll choose US East 1A. Here you have the option to create an RDS proxy. If you're gonna have a large number of connections being made to your database, then RDS proxy can be very useful, especially if you're doing something like uh, your application layer might be a serverless function that's scaling very quickly. RDS proxy is very useful for those scenarios. Now let's go down, I'm going to leave password authentication on for the database. I'm not going to enable enhanced monitoring, but if you do need more metric information in CloudWatch, you can enable enhanced monitoring and you can see some of that information exposed within RDS as well. Additional configuration here gives us the initial database name if we want to provide a name like database MySQL. We can enable automated backups. As you can see, it is enabled already with retention of one day and that can go from zero days switched off up to 35 days. So we'll leave that on the default. Now, what about encryption? By default, it's encrypting our database. I'm gonna deselect that option because I wanna show you later on how we can actually encrypt our database after it's been created. Now, quick tip, of course, you cannot do that. We have to create a snapshot. We have to copy the snapshot, encrypt the copy of the snapshot, and then launch a new encrypted database from it but I'm gonna walk you through that process in another lesson. So I'm gonna leave encryption off because this is the only time I can make this decision. Let's scroll down a little bit further. We can see the maintenance window. If you have a preference, you can choose when certain maintenance takes place. And we have the auto minor version upgrade enabled. So some small updates, patches and things will be updated automatically. Now you can see the estimated monthly costs, but remember this is free tier, so it's gonna be within the free tier anyway. That's all I need to do. I can now create my database. Oh, it doesn't like the dash in my database name. So let's just remove that out and create the database. 
Now it takes several minutes, so don't expect it to be fast. RDS is not the quickest service in the world in terms of creating your database. It's got to launch the instance. It's got to set a few things up. So give it a few minutes, could be five to 10 minutes, and then our database will be ready and we'll have a look at the configuration. So it's been a few minutes and the database has now been successfully created. It's still in the backing up state. If I click on the DB identifier, we can now see some important information. One of those pieces of information is of course the endpoint. This is the DNS name of our RDS database and it's using port 3306 because it's running the MySQL database. So now if we want to point our application servers at this database, this is the endpoint we can use and this is the port number that we can use. And of course, we'll need to open that up in the security groups if we're going to do that. On the monitoring tab here, you can see that we have several CloudWatch metrics that we can monitor to see how our database is performing. And if you want more detail, you can enable the enhanced monitoring as well. We got logs and events here, so we can see some of the information about what's been happening and the log files at the bottom here, which if you're a database admin, you will of course recognize. On the configuration tab, we can see the configuration of this database instance. We then have a few other tabs, including zero ETL integrations, maintenance and backups, tags, and recommendations. At the top of the screen here on the right-hand side, we have the actions menu. Here, we can stop or delete our database. If it's in the right state, we can't stop it at the moment because it's still in that backing up state. We can create a read replica, configure blue-green deployments, and so on. And as you can see, snapshots are here as well. Now, if we go to maintenance and backups, here we can see that we have the maintenance running. It's enabled for auto minor version upgrades. This is the maintenance window. You can modify that and specify your own if you wish to. We can see there's no pending maintenance at this time. At the bottom here, we can see the automated snapshot is being created at the moment. And if we wanna take a manual snapshot, this is where we can do it. So remember that with RDS, once the database is created, we cannot change the encryption status. So we have an RDS database, it is unencrypted. The EBS volume attached to it is therefore an unencrypted volume as the database is not an encrypted database. So what we wanna do is take a snapshot and of course the snapshot will also have the same encryption status as the EBS volume that it was created from. Next, we're gonna copy the snapshot and create an encrypted copy. We're then gonna restore from snapshot to a new EBS volume and create a database. Now bear in mind that is a different database. It's a new instance with a new endpoint. So your applications would need to be updated to point to this new database. So this is the only way of enabling encryption for an existing database. So back in the console, I have my existing database here. What I want to do is go across to maintenance and backups. And here we already have a couple of snapshots. You can also create your own snapshot. So what we're going to do is create a snapshot of our DB instance, and I'm gonna give it a name. And I'll call this unencrypted snap and take the snapshot. And that's gonna take a few minutes to create. My snapshot has now been successfully created. So we can see we have our unencrypted snap. So what I'm gonna do is select my snapshot, go to actions, and then click on copy. I'm going to provide a new snapshot identifier. I'll call it encrypted snap. For the region, it can be in the same region. And then for the other options, the only thing I need to do is change the encryption option. So now I have the option to turn it on and off. I'm gonna leave the default KMS key selected and then create a copy of the snapshot. And that'll take a few minutes to create. Now I've got an old snapshot here, which I forgot about actually, but if I click on this snapshot and copy it, try and copy it, what we'll notice is this is an encrypted snapshot and we cannot deselect this option. You cannot remove encryption from an encrypted DB snapshot. So we can enable encryption by copying the snapshot, but we're not able to unencrypt here. So that's something interesting to, uh, to point out. So I just need to give it a few minutes now to copy the snapshot, and then we'll be able to launch an encrypted database instance with the same data. I now have my encrypted snapshot. So if I select the snapshot and click on actions, again, if I try and copy it, we'll see that encryption cannot be disabled now. So let's come back, select it, and restore from snapshot. This is how you can then create a new database 
from your encrypted snapshot. So let's choose single DB instance, restored DB, maybe it doesn't like the dash, and then we can specify the various details. Scroll down a little further, and of course we can see that encryption is enabled. Now I'm not actually gonna launch this database, I think we know what's gonna happen, it's going to launch, and we can see here that it is going to be an encrypted database. So that's how we enable encryption for a database that already exists. Essentially, we have to create a completely new database. So, so now you'll remember if you see a question in an AWS exam that you cannot enable encryption for an existing database. You have to create a new database from it by taking the snapshot, copying that snapshot and encrypting that copy. All right, so let's cancel out of here. And I'm going to make sure that I do delete all of my snapshots here. So let's delete these free snapshots and then come back to databases, select my database and delete it. And I don't need a final snapshot. I don't need to retain your automated backups. Let's acknowledge, type delete me and we're all cleaned up.